Well, hello, hello, Islanders and global viewers. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Those of you who've been watching, thank you for continuing to watch and to support. And the new ones who are just coming on, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, last time, if you were here, you'll recall that I made for you some sorrel with beetroot. And I made a promise that I'm going to have a little surprise for you with this rest of that sorrel that I put aside. See that? This is the sorrel that I have aside there with some rum soaking in it. And today I'm going to be making, can you guess it? Sorrel Christmas cake. That's what we are up to today. We're going to be making you your very own sorrel Christmas cake. Uh, and I hope that you'll enjoy this recipe. So I just showed you the sorrel. We have it here in some wine and a little rum. And here we have the vanilla. Most of what we had last time, the spices. The vanilla. Jerry and nephew, some red label wine, rose water, and this one is a little food coloring, a little red food coloring. You'll see how that plays out as things unfold today. And this is your mixed spice, cinnamon, we have a cinnamon powder in here, butter, we have the butter here, chiffon butter that we're using today. There you have it. All right. And of course, we have six eggs here. We're using a little smaller portion today, making a little uh, smaller mix. And over here, we have one cup of fruits that had been soaked and pureed already beforehand. So we had it soaking like when we made the cake for you the last time. So that's what we'll be using, one cup of that. Here we have our dried ingredients on this side. We have breadcrumbs. All right, we have some sugar, brown sugar, baking powder, salt, and of course your flour, the cake and the pastry flour. That's the one we're using. If you have the regular flour, you can go right ahead and use that. We have some limes here for the juice to put in the egg and butter mixture and we have a nutmeg here see that we plan to grate this nutmeg into the mixture all right guys so stay with us as all of this unfold now i do believe that this will be quite an interesting recipe for you stay with me okay guys so i told you we have this sorrel left from the last time when we made that sorrel and the beetroot but if you didn't have the sorrel left over and you want to make your sorrel cake, all you need to do is just prepare it much like we did when we boil the, uh, when we draw the sorrel to make the sorrel drink. However, you're not going to put that much water in it. You just put a little bit, like maybe a cup of water to three cups of sorrel. Okay? All right. Here we go. Now we're going to just puree this for you. So that is how you would just boil, um, draw the sorrel, leave it to steep. And then by the next day, you just cool it out and pure it like we are doing now. All right, let's go. happening here oh yes this is quite smooth now this is the consistency we were aiming for see that look at it quite smooth guys that's it now that's your soil puree now what we're gonna do is set this aside and put on to creaming the butter and the sugar 
all right ready for the butter and the sugar to be cream now i'm just going to remind you just as i told you last time you want to get your butter to room temperature just like you want to have your eggs at room temperature also when you're going to be creaming them all right so we're doing the eggs afterwards right but first thing we're doing adding the butter and the sugar for creaming yes we left it out of the refrigerator then you come to the room temperature so it's really very soft you see how soft that is that's right so we're not going to go through all the results of that for the interest of time i'm going to do some of this creaming off camera right and then you just have a chance to see the rest of the process as we go along wow this is butter so just adding it in all the butter at once and then the sugar all right that's it that's it and a little trick about letting this the butter leave the spoon a little easier is you wet it yes when you wet the spoon it, the butter leaves it a little quicker okay adding in our sugar yes 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 that's just about it all right and don't worry about the portions they will be in the description below all right ready here we go we're starting on low first of all we won't call it. okay now this screaming has gone on for about 15 minutes and we're just now going to be gradually adding our egg we've beaten the eggs properly here and now we're going to add it little by little i told you last time and i'm telling you again please resist the temptation to pour in too much of the egg at once you're going to just be tipping it little by little almost like one at a time like that and go again and you repeat the process until all the egg mixture is finished okay in the middle of this we're going to be adding the lime juice right we're just going to squeeze it in this squeezer here so that we can help to cut some of that rawness from the egg all right i'm using two limes you can also grate the lime and use the zest you can use a little orange juice as well if you have some Squeezing this at once. Mm -hmm. All right. And remember, if you don't have a mixer to cream your butter and sugar, the wooden spoon and your baking tin will do just fine. It'll take a little bit more elbow grease, as you would say, but it will all work out. Here we go. all right there it is all finished now ready to combine with the fruits and then the dry ingredients all right guys we're going to be just putting in the fruits now the blended fruits and the puree sorrel there we go and that's it that's it for the fruits and here we go with the sorrel see that see how thick it is oh so good this in nicely all right wow all right all right good okay now we're gonna combine the dry ingredients and then sift them into here. 
all right combining all these dry ingredients now we have the nutmeg here cinnamon powder a little salt allspice and the baking powder so that is it, the flour and we have one cup of breadcrumbs okay Combine this nicely and then we're gonna sift it in to the wet ones, okay? Alright. Mix it around properly because we want to ensure that it's evenly distributed throughout this mix. We're gonna mix it through properly. And then of course I said we are going to sift it in because that's how you allow a lot of air to get into your mixture and it helps with the fluffiness of your cake. Alright. Alright, very good. All these spices smelling up already, can you imagine? Oh yes. Believe it or not, that nutmeg is so strong, the cinnamon, all spice, everything coming through. All right, replace our ingredients now. All right, at least that's the time. Not going to throw it in all at once. I'm going to just sift it in little by little. All right. Remember, I tell you about those lumps. You see that? All right. Just fold that in now, and you remember you're going to be cut. You just fold in around like that, and cut around and cut. Want to be using the same action. Hold and cut. All right. Repeat this until the mixture is finished, until you get in your flour. Then another portion. Sifting in again. Look at it, you see that? The lumps once again, the lumps. Which you don't want in your cake. Right? We just hold. And you have to keep going to the side of your bowl, ensure that you don't leave the mixture on the side of the bowl, unmixed. Mm, I'm smelling the rum in here. You seen that color guys? You see how it looks quite red? You can see the color of the soil coming through. I told you earlier that we will be adding some uh, uh, some food coloring, some red food coloring. But this is optional. You don't have to add it if you don't want to. You see we have a little bit of a red color going on here, a little reddish from the soil. But if you want that really bright popping color, you're gonna have to Add some food coloring to achieve that. Okay, 
So a little later on, we're going to be just adding that. I'm just holding in this mixture some more. All right, I told you guys that I'd be adding my food coloring, just about three tablespoons, right? Just about that because I want to have that nice, rich red color coming through. All right, all right, let's see how this works. Yes. See that lovely rich red that we're getting? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's it, that's it. See, it's looking much brighter now. This is the bright kind of red I'm trying to get. Alright, here we have our baking tin that is preheated, greased, and lined. Okay, if you don't have the wax paper, you can just maybe dust a little bit of flour in it after you've greased it to help to allow the cake to leave easily once it's finished. Alright, so I'm going to be just pouring this in now, and we don't want to fill it up too far. I want to take it just maybe about a three quarters of an inch from the top, right? So here we go now. Let me just pour this in. Yes, keep on coming, keep it coming. Watching it, yes. Alright. That looks like just about it. We want to leave enough space for the cake to rise a bit not going to rise a whole lot but you don't want it to be having difficulty to rise and then it crack up too badly so i think we're gonna stop right there if there is left in here we're gonna put in another little mixture put in another little container all right oh good that's looking awesome look at that color guys let me see how rich that is. Now we're just going to smooth it over just a little bit. Just a little bit. This is mainly smooth already. All right. There we go now. And the oven is preheated at 350 degrees. Now, this is going to take just about an hour and a half in the oven. And for the first 45 minutes, we're going to just leave it at 350, after which we will put it to 300. Lower it to 300 at that point, okay? Follow me over to the oven. So, okay guys, in the bottom of the oven, on the bottom shelf, I have this baking tray with some water to help some of that steam to come up into the cake and keep that moisture into it. Now the cake is going to go into the middle of the oven, just like the last time. We're sliding that in right about now, right there. And this other little one will accompany it. You just gently close it. You don't just slam the door, you gently close it. Back here in 45 minutes to see the progress. Okay guys, after the 45 minutes, I can see that the cake is well on its way. Our sorrel Christmas cake is well on its way. I'm going to just lower the temperature now from 350 degrees to 300 degrees. Leave it for another 45 minutes. Then we remove it and do our test to see how ready it is. Stick around. Okay guys, the one and a half hour has elapsed and so we're going to check on our cake now and see what's the verdict, okay? Oh 
all right here we go there is our cake we have a few little cracks but that's all right once it cools down a bit and we put a little bit more wine on it those will be taken care of it's just the nature of a fruit cake all right so let's have a test now oh yes comes out really clean that means this cake is ready it is ready guys look at it you see how red it is that nice rich color and it smells so good it really really smells good mm, i have to let it cool out a little bit before we can attempt to slice it and uh, serve up a piece of it for you and then you leave it here for about let's say about an hour or so to cool down and then we will slice it okay guys we've left our cake to cool down for just about three hours and we are back here to serve it up for you now all right first things first let's get it out of this can all right there you go there you go oh look at it looking so so beautiful i just love this colony guys what do you think do you like it let me know in the comments if you like this color yes it's looking lovely so i'm gonna do a little something something on the on the plate for you because i like doing that all right last time somebody asked what this is okay this is just some nutella which is liquid cocoa right oh yes look at that dazzle dazzle yes there we go hmm. awesome so we're gonna just put our cake down on it cut you a slice I'm gonna just cut you a slice of this oh it feels nice and soft see the knife going into it nice and soft I tell you all right and another right here and just like that Oh, smells mouth watering, guys. Sorrel cake. This is your sorrel fruit cake we have in here. All right, guys. I'm gonna just lift out of this piece right here. All right. Hands clean, hands clean, hands clean. Don't forget that cold. Clean hands. Oh, wow. Awesome. Look at that. Hey, look at it. Look at it. You see how moist that is? Mmm. Fabulous. All right, and we're going to just lay it right down here in the center of your plate wow look at that doesn't that look tasty and yummy guys yes 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 come in a little closer come a little closer just a little closer yes look at that awesome um, i have some almond shavings here i'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit of that over it just a little bit just garnish it a little bit don't want to hide the cake you know with too much of this shaving but we're just gonna add a little bit that's my almond shaving that i'm adding right here oh some wow wow look at that awesome looking so tasty uh-huh yes guys 
I'm loving the look of this. Looking so nice. Awesome. I'm just going to taste this up for you now and let you get an idea. I'm going to do for you what you can't exactly do for yourself but join me on this tasting experience right now okay guys gonna taste it up and see exactly what it's going on with now awesome This is so soft, guys. Mm -hmm. It smells delicious. Look at that. Look at that. Uh. Oh, my days. This is good. Mm -hmm. Yes, that summer flavor blends right in with everything else like you'd never believe. Mm. This is divine, guys. This is divine. I love it. There you have it, guys. Your Jamaican sorrel fruit cake. Delicious. Hope you'll be trying out this one in your neck of the woods this holiday season. And if you like this video, remember to give us a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. Until next time, ciao.